Okay, class, come in and get sit down. We're gonna teach you about the basics of electricity in a way that anybody can understand. So have a seat, Billy, Susie, both of you sit down. Quit playing over there. We're gonna cover this right after this. All right, class, come on in. We're gonna go through a lesson today and I'm gonna make this as simple as possible. If you've ever tried to understand electricity, you know that it can be really confusing. I was an electronic warfare technician in the Air Force. I was in the Air Force from 1984 to 1991. I went through electronic warfare technician school for nine months, six hours a day. I managed to graduate at the top of my class. I forgot 90% of it, but I know enough to teach you guys this. So what we're going to do is talk about electricity basics. First thing we're going to talk about that is the, one of the most common things in electricity is what they call Ohm's law. Now, by the way, Ohm's is the measure of resistance and it, you know, it came about basically because of that. So what Ohm's law is, is the relationship between voltage, current, and resistance. And that is expressed in this little triangle here. And I'll explain that in a minute. First, voltage is represented by the letter E or V, and it's written as voltage or volts. Current is represented by the letter I, and it's written as ampere or amps, most commonly amps. Resistance is represented by the letter R, and it is expressed or written as ohm and uses this symbol which if i remember right i think it's the greek omega symbol you guys tell me below if i'm wrong i wasn't a frat boy so i don't know i also didn't study that part now let's go over here to this uh triangle and explain what that means because often there's three components to electricity and in this case what it is is the voltage and the amperage and the resistance if you know any two of those you can calculate the third using this formula. So how do you do that? If you know V and I, you do a division. It's V over I. If you know voltage and resistance, but not amps, it's again a division. If you know amperage and resistance, but not voltage, that's a multiplication because it's side by side. And you know, if you do division, it's over and under. A multiplication is side by side. So let's say the voltage is 120 and the amperage is 10. So that's V over I division. You divide that, you get 12 ohms. Again, if you knew amperage was 10 and resistance was 100, you'd have a thousand volts. It's just multiplication. Most commonly, you guys won't need to know Ohm's law. It doesn't come into play in household current all that often, even automotive and all that. I rarely use uh, Ohm's law. What's more important for what we're gonna use is most commonly this uh, formula for wattage. You all have heard the term watts, right? Uh, say, you know, your air conditioner uses 1400 watts or you've got a toaster that uses 1400 watts, your microwave. That's what we most commonly talk about when we talk about the electrical consumption of it. But first of all, let me explain how to think of all of this easier. We're going to think of it like water. This is one of the most common ways of explaining it. So let's imagine this is a garden hose and the tiniest little garden hose. You must have a little bitty garden. So here we have the garden hose. Now think about the amount of water going through here. When it's, let's say you turn the spigot on wide open, you've got nothing on the end to restrict it. It's running out full bore, right? But it often only goes out about two or three feet, but there's a lot of water going through there pretty quickly. The amount of water going through there, that's the current. So current is basically the amount of electricity flowing through a wire, or in this case, the amount of water. It really works really similar. Now the voltage, 
is the pressure that pushes it through there. If you were to measure the voltage right here, the amount of pressure that's right here at this open end, if you could not restrict it, it's very low because there's very little restriction. Again, you change one of these, it's going to change the other two. Oh, looking back up here. So if you have a lot of current, a lot of water flow going through here, and back behind it, you've got a high pressure, you're gonna have a lot of current, right? If that pressure back there decreases, let's say it was 70 PSI and suddenly it drops to 10, the current is going to decrease because the two affect each other. Let's take voltage. Voltage is the pressure right here. If you put your hand right here, there's not much pressure. But what if you put your thumb over the end and you make a little gap and you start spraying. It's got a lot of pressure, right? Because you increased the resistance. The resistance got higher, the voltage went up. It's always, each one of those affects the other. So let's say you have 120 volts and you had very little resistance, so 10. 10 ohms of resistance and in water it'd be different, but it's just think of it the same way. You would have 12 amps. Now, if you had 120 volts, but you increase that resistance a lot to say 100 ohms, um, you would only have 1.2 amps. The amount of water going through the hose is the voltage. The amount of restriction, your garden nozzle, whatever, that is the resistance and the amount of pressure pushing it through it, that is the voltage. Now, another, um, Thing that might help you with that is high voltage power lines. I think I read the other day they can have as much as 100,000 volts. Now, why do they need that? Obviously, we don't need that in our house. That's because to go long distances, it takes more pressure. Imagine if you had that garden hose hooked up to your house and you wanted to pump water a mile away. By the time it got there, there would be so much resistance from the internal resistance of the line that the water would just trickle out. So the high voltage power lines also have that problem. So they need more pressure to push it further, but also the higher the voltage, the smaller the wire can be. So if they were to try and push, say 110 volts through those power lines, they'd probably be this big, you know? So they, they can get down to a much smaller line by using higher voltage. Then they just use transformers, which you see on top of the poles, to drop it down to 110 voltage. Uh, it drops down at power stations and then it drops down at transformers. It's a lot it's complicated. I don't even understand it all. So it's not 100,000 volts at the transformer, but you get the point. Let's go back to this. One of the most common things we use is watts. Watts is the measurement of power usually that you're using. It's expressed as the letter P. So there's a formula here too. Get my pointer out, kids. Pay attention, take notes in your little iPads. P power is equal to I amperage times voltage. We just learned it as pi. P equals I times E. That's the most common one you need to know. If you remember it like this, you can calculate any of those three if you know two of them. Actually, let me clarify this one more thing. What is a kilowatt? We've all heard that term. A kilowatt is 1000 watts of energy used in one hour. So let's take a quick example. Let's say you have a hundred watt appliance or in the old days, a light bulb. Now it'd take about 10 light bulbs to get a hundred watts. But if you had a hundred watts, being used and you used it for 10 hours, you would multiply 100 times 10, you'd get a thousand. That would be one kilowatt. You have now used one kilowatt of energy that you have to pay for over 10 hours. Now be aware that if you read the numbers on say a refrigerator, it may say it'll probably list it in amps, but let's say it listed in watts. Let's say 1200 watts. It doesn't use that all the time. Not all appliances use that all the time. Then we'll use that when it needs to cool it back down. Then it holds it because of all the insulation. Other things do that with variable energy. There's a lot of appliances that don't use the rated amount all the time. So just think about how they work. Also, you may have to do that math. If it listed as a 15 amp appliance, you got to do some math. So let's do an example. Uh, first, let's calculate power usage. If you want to calculate your wattage, that's P you would multiply the amps, say you have an appliance that uses 12 amps or a saw or something, times 120, 
which is the standard voltage. It can be 110, but it's supposed to be 120. You get 1440 watts. Let's say you don't know these two. In this case, let's say you know it's 1200 watts, but you don't know how many amps you're drawing, but you do know it's 120 volts. You do the math. You know the wattage, so there's P, and you know the voltage, there's E, again, E. So you divide P by E, it equals 10. You're drawing 10 amps. Now, why is that important? Well, amps are real important. Wattage is actually least important. It's a good number because it's how we measure how much energy we use. But if you're plugging something into a circuit, you need to know if that circuit can handle it, especially if you're plugging multiple things in. You've got a 15 amp circuit. That's pretty standard on homes. Let's say you have a 15 amp circuit. That means that um, you're below the breaker, the rating, so you're safe. You don't want to run, you really don't even want to run close to 15, like 14.5. You got a good chance of heating it up and kicking that breaker, and it could start a fire. You can't always trust breakers to save you. I once melted a six-way into the carpet because the breaker didn't blow, but I was overloading the six-way. A six-way has got a rating on it. Make sure you don't overload that too. So you just look at the amps, calculate it. Another way you can do that is by a meter like this power meter. I'll put a link to it in the description. It basically allows you to measure the wattage, the amperage, the voltage, and the kilowatts. It's a pretty handy tool if you want to track energy usage. And it's a cheap way to measure it. You can also get a clamp-on amp meter, but that's got to detect just one line at a time. There's other ways, but that's one of the simplest ways. But often you just read the uh, bottom of most appliances and you'll see the rating listed as 5.1A for amps. Let me discuss another common kind of a fallacy. A lot of times you'll hear that you shouldn't plug six things into one circuit. And that's to protect those of you who don't understand this right here. If you understand this and do the math right, you're pretty safe. So the reason is you don't want to overload it. So if you have a six way and you plug in three amps plus two amps plus four amps plus seven amps well right there you're at 11 13 16 you just overloaded that circuit if you turn them all on at once you'll either trip the breaker or you could melt things i've melted a few things in my time just recently i melted a cable the size of that garden hose right there on my rv because we accidentally drew too much amperage through our rv it's a long explanation but basically it's 12 volts converting to 110. And so it uses 10 times as many amperage amps on that 12 volts. And that it was putting out probably 350 amps out of our lithium batteries. And it simply overheated it. There was a fuse that should have blown. You can see in this picture here, it just melted. So we had a near fire. That's why it's important to understand this and why I decided to show you guys understand all this. But let's just say you got that six way and you look and, oh, you're plugging in your cell phone charger and it uses 0.5 amps. And you plug in another device that uses 1.5 amps and then one that uses two and then one that uses one and one that uses three. One, two, three, four, five. Let's add one more that's two. So now we got, you've got 10 amps on six devices on a 15 amp circuit. As long as your six ways rated for that, you're safe. So it's more about making sure you don't overload the circuit. So, hey guys, if you like this kind of stuff, um, comment down below. If you got any questions, comment down below. I hope this clarified a few things for you. I'm gonna try and do more stuff like home energy efficiency, solar, as well as my usual Drywall Academy. If you guys are interested in taking our courses through our Drywall Academy, be sure and go there to drywallacademy.com. Sign up for our email list. As soon as we start putting those courses out, you'll get a notice. And I'll probably give you guys a discount for being on that list. As always, I thank you guys for stopping by. You've been really good students today. Billy, quit pulling Susie's hair. I told you she doesn't like oh, it. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe she oh, does. Yeah. She's 35 years old. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for stopping by and I hope I helped you out with another little thing about home improvement and I'll see you guys on the next video. Be sure and click that like, subscribe and all that good stuff. Talk to you later. Bye.